Welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. Uh, we're not ready. No. Are we? I don't think anyone's ready, are they? No one's really Let's ready. Let's just delay this whole New Year business for a couple more weeks, can't we? That was badly drawn by, with all, by, with all possibilities there. See? This is um, Adam and Joe here We're on just BBC not ready. Six Music. We come in, we we're a little bit flustered there. Yeah. This is Do you not get that feeling across the, the nation as a whole that maybe just nobody's ready? No. And that we need a couple more weeks? It was nice to have a slightly distended Christmas break. But it should be even more distended. Right. How long do you need? I I need a, a two and a half, three more weeks. That long? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think everybody does. Uh, there's nothing worth. It's very cold. Yeah. And gloomy. It's a nice morning though. It's a lovely morning. That's true. Oh, it's the beginning. It's three days into what's going to be an amazing year. Is it? Yeah. This is what we need—a bit of optimism. Oh, it's going to be great. Buckles. By the I predict. Uh, by the end of December, mm -hmm. the financial crisis will by be... By the end of... De oh, December 2009. Yeah, yeah. yeah, more or less over. More or less? Yeah. By May, it'll be considerably better. Will, will it? Yeah. Things are going to start looking up in oh, February. Really? Around about the 6th of February. The 6th. And, uh, and yeah, well, ask me more predictions. Um, what's going to be the first real ray of sunshine? What's <laughs> going to be the event that's going to make people think, oh, all this gloom and doom and war and yeah. breakdown and misery? Yeah. It was just a flash in the pan. Yeah. We were wrong. Things are much better than we anticipated. Uh, this I'll, year's going to be sure, super. Sure. Uh, Defiance with Daniel Craig. <laughs> the release of the film Defiance. Yeah, it's exciting. It's from the director of Blood Diamond. And just a general mood of defiance. Absolutely. We will not bow to such gloom and doom. That's exactly what's going on in the film. Really? And if you look at the poster, you can <laughs> see the looks of defiance in their faces. Whatever it is, they will not do it. They refuse. It's just a film about three men absolutely refusing <laughs> to do what's, whatever's asked of them. However reasonable, they just refuse. No. No, I'm not doing that. Could you move your car, please? It's blocking the uh, disabled No, exit. I will not. No. That's Jamie Bell. <laughs> That's a Jamie Bell impression. Was it? Yeah, it wasn't very good. The Bell Man. And look, I've got tinsel. It's the got tinsel. It's this all... is Adam and Joe, yeah. by the way, on Six Music. Happy New Year, listeners. Thanks for joining us, Tinsels. especially if you're listening live, Falling joining us this wall. early. Uh, the Six Music studio is looking pretty disgusting i was just observing yeah i'm not sure it ever gets cleaned and this time next week i'm serious i might actually bring a hoover in with me that would be good and do a little bit of hoovering will that interfere with the uh play outs <laughs> do you think <laughs> cause any buzzing on the tracks yeah absolutely no? fine I, well i'm gonna do that next week i'm gonna bring a hoover in let's i'm gonna clean this place up have a little bit of music before we tell you more about what you can expect from this exciting show here's lily allen with the fear right yeah, thanks. Do you understand now? Yes, I do. That's a State of the Nation address there from Lily Allen, and uh, it's called The Fear. That's from her forthcoming album, It's Not Me. It's expected for February release. She'll, she'll be touring the UK throughout March and May. <laughs> <laughs> Playing <laughs> concerts or just, uh, just, you know, travelling around? Just looking around. Just looking around. Yeah, meeting That's people. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. I never Ooh. knew they had those kind of buildings in Dudley. She'll be saying things like that. It's exciting. Uh, so this is Adam and Joe here. Very nice to be with you, listeners, on the third day of January 2009. On the third day of January <laughs> 2009. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> well, you, don't know. you went down that road. I finished it. That's your fault. Uh, so later on, we're going to be resolving um, Song Wars. Yes. Now, Song Wars uh, was a special thing last week. Would it have been last week? Yeah. yeah. Uh, between Chris Salt, the Salt Man, our special guest contributor, and Garth Jennings, also a special guest contributor. They both wrote Christmassy songs. One of them will have won. Mm -hmm. So we'll be playing a slightly ill-timed Christmas song just to make, sort of, give people flashbacks. Yeah. Of their Christmas in maybe a pleasant way or maybe a sort of slightly grotty and tardy way. How was your Christmas, incidentally? It was all right. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was all right. Highlight? Oh, well, I got ill. Oh, did you? I did. I, I thought you never got ill, Cornwall. Well, I decided to fall ill on Christmas Eve. Right. Mm. 
and then I didn't get better again until New Year's Eve. Was it a cosy illness, like a nice Christmassy one that you could feel mm, good about? It or? started Don La Toilette. Ah. Yeah, it was a lonely solo illness. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, involving me shut in a little room <laughs> <laughs> for long periods of time, <laughs> sitting and thinking. The norovirus. Yeah, the, the Baz Luhrmann so, flu. Right. The Australian flu. It didn't prevent you from going to see Australia, though, I hope. It did, sadly. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Uh, but, uh, and so I remember, and then it turned into a, a sneezing, uh, snot, snot based mm -hmm. festival. Right. And it didn't clear up till New Year's Eve. Oh, I'm sorry. So about it was that. a sickness zone. And what about presents? Top present? Top present. Ooh. Uh, I got a little digital, digital recorder. Ah, oh, quite good. Yeah. Memo recorder. Memo recorder. Yeah, have you got any good ideas in there? Nope. Haven't opened it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Saving up that pleasure. Yeah. How about you? Very nice. I got, um, I got from my dad, I mm. got mm. some sealant. Oh, <laughs> what to seal what sort of thing? <laughs> oh, you know, out outdoor Australian and indoor food. right it jobs, cracks, useful, Australia, that kind of thing. Did, Filler. Oh, yeah, sorry. some sealant, no, so and uh, also, but, and you know, you could use it round a pipe. You sh you should have bought it in. <laughs> maybe you I'll bring it in. Some stuff. Hey, maybe I'll bring it in next week. Next week, I'll clean a new seal. <laughs> right. and we'll get this whole studio sorted. Fair enough. He also got me um, a glue gun. Right. Which is a good present. I mean, you know, as he pointed out himself, it's always useful. It is. Even if you've already got one. Yeah. Because you never know if it's going to break it's down. It's the type of gun the kids like to carry these days. Right. Now that real firearms are illegal, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to carry glue guns. So their they're, firearms are illegal now, are they? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the kids fire hot glue at each other on the estates. Well, it's a good idea because it, they have to wait for the glue guns, the, the, the glue sticks. Yeah, they have up. a confrontation, then they yeah. have to find a plug. And the mo, you know, in that time, <laughs> it takes for the glue sticks to heat up. Sometimes is all it takes to diffuse a nasty yeah, situation. Sometimes it gets worse. Though. They just think about it. You know, if they issued glue guns to a lot of the armies around the world, mm. I bet that things would get fixed up in more ways than one. <laughs> Here's a bit of music for you now, listeners. This is a free play for you. And um, it's something sort of roughy, tufty and shouty to get you excited. It's Supergrass with Richard the Third. That's Black Street with no diggity. No diggity. No diggity. You're quite I don't, it just means I don't like tea. Yeah. No dig a tea. No, I certainly don't dig a tea. That's what it means. Uh, and before that, you heard a trail for Sean Keaveney. Sounded fun, having some chuckles. When's that being released? Uh, that's being released every day during the week on BBC Six Music in the mornings. Brills. And before that, you heard Supergrass with Richard the Third. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Uh, delight to be here. And I think it's time to resolve last week's Song Wars right now. Shall we have the jingle, Ben? It's time for Song Wars, the war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of proms. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. That's right, listeners. Uh, song Wars last week was all about Christmas and it featured two guest composers. Garth Jennings, famous pop video and feature film director. And Chris Salt, the winner of our Video Wars competition, both were in the studio and both were forced to write Christmassy songs. In order to give us a week off. Yeah. Which we very much appreciated. And Chris Salt uh, was not very confident about his because he's not a naturally musical man. But he, however, did a great job of creating a song that was loosely based around our football song. Yeah. That we did years ago. Just him and, and a guitar. Right very stripped down that he learned to play only a few weeks before during the song I think, right. was the conclusion we came to <laughs> uh, garth created something a little more elaborate because he's he's got more musical chops that was about a nativity play mm. um so let's find out who won though have we got the envelope there we do here Joe's. we go Who do, who's your money on there adam you know what i would say that our listeners would tend to favor the underdog and I would uh, characterise the salt man as the underdog. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you're right. Do you think <laughs> Garth is listening to this? Yeah, almost certainly. Garth, man. Um, girdle your... What's the phrase? Loins. Gird your loins. Gird your loins. Garth has 5%. 
and the salt man has 95 percent romped home wow now that surprises me not because chris's song was not the best <laughs> but because there was um he's got a he quite a unique delivery style Listen chris. To this top class tiptoeing listeners Carry on, not, I'm about to wave <laughs> right in. I'm just dancing around the edge. Tactical he tiptoe. sounds as if he's singing his song at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah, if does. you imagine him tied to a chair, <clears throat> naked, mm. with some insane terrorist <laughs> with a hand grenade right next to his head, going, Sing Christmas song! Sing Christmas song or I kill you! Yeah, it happens a lot. This is what would come out. <laughs> Let's hear it. Ho, ho, ho. Merry, merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry, merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas. I've got a gift. The gift is for Christmas. I've got a card. Whoa. I've got a cake. The cake is for Christmas. I've got a care. Roll! Ho, ho, ho. Merry, merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas! When the tree's decorated, everyone's breath is baited. When the stockings are filled up, that's the end of the build up. When we're opening presents, Opening presents is pleasant. Batteries are not included. If you haven't got some in the kids are gonna get all moody. Ho ho ho. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. And on it goes for a while. And oh, uh oh, listeners, oh. forgive me if you've never heard the song before and you're upset that I'm interrupting oh, it. Oh, oh. Um you could actually go and download last week's podcast right now if you wanted to listen to the song in full. Uh, or they'll, they'll probably still be on the website, won't they, for another week, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a new song, or it's probably next week. But there's something about, you know, going back to the, 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 the Christmas sausity, the Christmosity of that song that was so wonderfully evoked by Chris Salt, which is just too melancholy to bear. <laughs> <laughs> on the 3rd of January. And because of the excess of melancholy, we had to fade it's it too, out. <laughs> it's too powerful for us. <laughs> We've been overwhelmed with melancholy. <laughs> so, Chris, thank you very much. And, man, congratulations, 95%. That's extraordinary. And, Garth, commiserations. Uh, welcome to the 5% Club. Have you ever lost by 5%, Joe? Not that I can remember. Uh, it's usually lower. It's cr it's a crushing defeat, and it's not one easy to get over. So, Garth, don't take it personally. It won't be the last time you compose a song for us, I very much hope. And thank you, all of you who voted. Uh, let's have some more real music right now. This is Black Kids with I'm Gonna Teach Your Boyfriend How to Dance With You. That's Black Kids um with i'm not gonna teach your boyfriend how to dance with you it's not a situation that everyone would be able to relate to i don't think though mm. is it well do they mean dance euphemistically yeah but even then even if it was a euphemism in what way how, how often does that happen that you have to teach someone else someone else's boyfriend how to girlfriend do, do stuff i'm not gonna teach your boyfriend how to it dance says with girlfriend you. here what on my list does it yeah Girlfriend. It says boyfriend on my computer screen. What is it, Ben? Girlfriend or boyfriend? Boyfriend. 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 Uh, no, it's not a situation that arises very much. I wish it would arise more. I'd like to do that. To teach um, people's boyfriends how to dance with their girlfriends? Yes. And to do other things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just like to interfere in other couples' relationships. Yeah. And try and, you know, uh, mess them up. Be like a love coach. Yes, exactly. Like a love guru. There must have been some kind of wonderful film made uh, like that. Kind About of. a love guru? Yeah, yeah. No. Wouldn't that be a fun thing? No. About a funny, like, Eastern love guru with a little... No, they'd, no one would ever do that. That would be awful. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Uh, this is BBC Six Music. It's 9.30. Time for the news. On to that was Curtis Mayfield with Superfly from 1973. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Good morning, listeners, and a very happy new year. Uh, now, here's an email that came in during the week from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, in Canada. Uh, I think the name of the person who sent it is Kathy, And she says, I just heard the news, and I'm all a tingle. 
I cannot think of a better choice for the next Doctor Who than Joe Cornish. Yes. I commend the BBC on their foresight and ability to gauge the public's taste. Of course, rumour has it that Adam will be the Doctor's companion. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the emotion when Joe hands Adam the keys to the TARDIS in the episode where Joe saves Adam from having forced relations with a cyberwoman? Of course, in this series, the TARDIS could be fitted with a fabulous sound system which, uh, from which amazing tunage could be heard, like on Six Music, I yeah. assume she means. It's obvious that the next text of the nation should be uh, on the question of what lovable quirk the Joe Doctor should have. Mm, that's a good subject. But, you know, when I read that email, yeah. <clears throat> and I should add, listeners, that Adam and I are getting sent emails during the week at our homes so we can catch up with them. And as ever, every email is read yeah uh and when i read that one i got a bit excited <laughs> yeah because you thought there was a real rumor i thought maybe there's a real rumor <laughs> maybe the internet <laughs> forums are buzzing you know maybe i just don't know about it i mean it seems far-fetched because i haven't done a lot of acting so on did screen. you put joe cornish doctor who into google it crossed my mind but i didn't actually do it did you not no hand on heart hand on heart i didn't do it <laughs> i'm not that stupid but there is still a part of my brain that would entertain the notion yeah that even though I've never really acted properly anywhere in the world, unlike yourself, well, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah. um, that maybe other people out there have not got that block that mm -hmm. I have, and they know that I'd be brilliant, and they're just ahead of the game, and and you know, talking about me being Doctor you, you Who, you would be good. Do you think you'd be a good assistant? Thanks, like a little hairy sidekick. I did start practicing saying things to my girlfriend. Because I told her about it. What sort of things would you say? Well, just looking over her shoulder and dropping the smile from my face and going, Daleks. <laughs> 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 to see if I could make her look round. Do you ever do that in the middle of a conversation? It's just... <laughs> I'm doing it to Adam now. Daleks. You just drop your face. <laughs> and look slightly <laughs> to the left of the person. <laughs> oh, look at my God, Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> then I good. could never avoid, I could never avoid a little grin. Plus, you could probably not think of a third villain. <laughs> apart from uh, those two. Saigons. Saigons. <laughs> I used to be big on Doctor Who, man. I'm not yeah. so up to speed on the new incarnation. I did watch the Cyberman, Cyberman <laughs> thing. <laughs> I did watch that over Christmas. Yeah. That was quite good. Was that the one where they go back in the past and everything? I don't know what was going on. Yeah, it was. Right. Yeah, they met the man from Life on Mars, was it? Uh, oh, some, yes. Some DC, like yeah. your face. Yeah. Anyway, I was, uh, it was in my mind over Christmas, this new, this Doctor Who issue. Mm -hmm. Who should be the new Doctor Who? It's an important national role. It's top of the news. It's, bit, it's like, you know, being the new Prime Minister or something in a way, isn't it? It's, it's very important. It's a more important position. And I was watching on New Year's Eve. I was I stayed at home on New Year's Eve. Decided not to bother. Right. Just thought so we'd watch telly. Just uh, took the I was telly watching, into the uh, lobby. <laughs> yeah. I was watching Elton John live at wherever he was, and it crossed my mind that he would make a superb Doctor Who. That's not a bad idea. He, he's got a, a coat with little. Uh, they seemed like question marks on it. I think they were probably Cadillacs or mm. something. But he's got the right costumery. He's got all the accoutrements, the crazy glasses and the and the funny hair. He's got He's a got fun, good-looking sidekick. Exactly, Furnish could be the sidekick. <laughs> and can you imagine the haughty fury when confronted by the villains? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I can't swear on this programme. There'd yeah. be a lot of swearing in Doctor Who starring Elton John, wouldn't there? <laughs> oh, God! Cybermen! Oh, God! Get out of my way! Go away! Just shut up and go away! You tin ponce! Get out of it! That would be excellent. And he'd just march back into the TARDIS. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't really bother with any of it. But it would be hugely entertaining. That's a very good idea, to join the dots and, and just make the Doctor flamboyantly gay. Mm. Uh, it's genius. Mm, thanks. I, I mean, I think it's a good way to go with any fictional character. We were talking about James Bond the other day. and how well, Elton John as James Bond. No, but, you know, how, we were talking about how it would be nice if maybe uh, James Bond was a little more bendy. And yeah. it would, I think, uh, it's always a good thing to do with any popular character. Yeah. Let's make them a little, um, more interesting, uh, sexually. <laughs> <coughs> with their sexuality. <laughs> good point. Well That's made. That's a good idea. I made it really well though, didn't I? Thanks. Uh, here is the Airborne Toxic Event. Uh, is that the name of the wow. What the hell's going on there? Let me just check my notes. Maybe that's a news announcement that there's been an airborne <laughs> toxic event. 
I mean, they're not going to get much play, are they? If there's any kind of problem, terrorist problem, they're going to be right off the playlist. Are you sure that that isn't a news announcement? I'm pretty sure it's a band. This is released January 26th of this year from their self-titled debut album. The band are from L.A. They formed two years ago, Joe. Right. And uh, they're called Airborne Toxic Event, and this track is called Sometime Around Midnight. Let's have a listen. I'm getting under the desk. (laughs) Yeah. That's the Airborne Toxic event with Sometime Around Midnight. Surely Airborne Toxic... I mean, that just sounds like a euphemism for a It's chuff. a disastrous title for the record and the uh, band, isn't it? Yeah, because, like... It sounds like a news announcement with precisely what's going to happen and when. Or just a guff. Yes. You know? <laughs> airborne Toxic really? event. I've done a little <laughs> Airborne what Toxic in, event. That's what happens in, in the Buxton parent bedroom around midnight. <laughs> <laughs> it happens in every... <laughs> it happens in every bedroom. Not in mine. No? Mm, the Dutch no. oven. Do you go outside? The Dutch oven? Have you not heard that expression? <laughs> no. That's Come horrible. On. What are the... you doing baking special farty buns in there? That's right, with the duvet. Really? Have you never done a Dutch oven? That's the fun thing to do what, with you your... you actually bake things in there? Yeah, you bake a little pop Smoke in Smoke them. Bake a little chuff. And then you, um, as a fun game, you uh, maybe spring it on your partner. No. It's not something I'd recommend. It's something that loaded readers do. I've never right. done it myself. <laughs> <With the chuffing. laughs> That's quite revolting. Well, there you go. Um, and, and I think they're talking about a different kind of toxic event. I'm pretty sure they're not. Yeah. Anyway, what? Yeah, that's released 26th of January 2009. It's from their self-titled album. So they've really gone the whole hog with that name. Yeah. They're not letting they're go. They're delighted with it. They love it. <laughs> they absolutely love it. They had a little meeting. That name came out top of their list of 200 names, and they're jumping up and down with glee. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, it's free play time from me, and this is a little bit of Jamaican uh, re- reggae. Mm. Yeah, do you like a bit of reggae? You know, I like cod reggae. Do you? Yeah. What What sort of thing? Anything from Joe Jackson. Right, any, really? Yeah, any bit of, any bit of white reggae, or... Uh, the Police, or who are other great cod reggae? Thomas Dolby did a, a lovely <laughs> cod reggae song. Culture Club. My brain is like a sieve. Culture Club. I always felt that Culture Club's attempts at reggae were somehow more authentic. I don't really? know why, yeah. But anyway, you've got some real reggae. Yeah, this is somebody called Johnny Osborne, and this was recorded in 1980. It's a song called Truth and Rights. And I'm playing this because later, I think in the last hour of the show, I'm going to play a free play that samples this. Ooh, it's all linking yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've linked my stinks. Joe Cornish for 2009. Yeah, you know, up. I've thought this through. Yeah, it's the only element of today's show that's been thought through. Two weeks off and he's like, he's got a genius idea. You should have put that in your memo recorder there. I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> Maybe I'll do it retrospectively. <laughs> Next week, will you bring in your memo recorder and play us some of the ideas you've had during the week? Sure. Come on, that'd yeah, be great. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's hear Johnny This Osborne. is called Truth and Rights. That's the Lippos, the Flaming Lips, with Satellite of You, which was recorded as a session track for Six Music on the 11th of July. I knew it, I knew it. 2002. Had, had, had a real July the 11th feel about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen their space film? You know what? I haven't. I've got a copy of it. What's it called? Santa Claus versus the Martians or something? Uh, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Santa on Mars, Christmas on Just Mars. Just cho- you've chosen not to watch it? No, it's a shelf classic. Is it's it? It's one of those things you get because you're genuinely interested. And then you never actually get around There's to never the, the right moment. Still in its plastic? Uh, yep. Yeah, really. Still wrapped. It's one of those things that could easily be recycled as a Christmas present in future That's years. That's a topic of conversation we might come back to later, listeners. Things that are sitting on your shelf... Uh, that are completely unwrapped, that you've never watched. Yeah, especially films. I mean, that's an easy thing to mm. do with films, especially now they're so cheap, you know, Zavi going out of business there. You could have mm. swept in just before Christmas and scooped up an armful of bargains of films that would easily sit on your shelves for months and months and months. Word had it on the street, and I'm only reporting what's being said on the street, <laughs> that, that Zavi security staff weren't bothering to clobber people no. for walking out with stuff that why would they do with because they're all being laid off yeah and they don't care so so word on the street was that basically uh zavi was a big um you know kind of free-for-all <laughs> <laughs> you could wander in there and pop a nintendo wii under your arm and stroll out 
certainly the prices were outrageously uh cheap cheap yeah and mm. then obviously that's not true i'm sure the security staff are still doing their job yeah but maybe they're not <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about it that way well i mean it's it's you know you wouldn't you would understand if they yeah did turn a blind eye especially if you were working at woolies as well now that you see hear that people on the uh channel islands there was it the channel Islands? i know not getting their special not pay. getting their redundancy pay yeah because they're n not covered for it That's outrageous. it would be wrong to i think one should pay extra for goods at zavi yeah as a kind of gesture towards keeping that kind of shop afloat mm -hmm. you know instead of picking over its carcass like starving vultures what's going to replace zavi now though what are those massive outlets going to turn into a big the, a, a big pound store big nutty warehouses massive pound stores well you know buckets and out things. in east anglia where i now live the one of the big shopping malls there in norwich Every other shop was like that. Really? Like a gutted shop that had just been temporarily set up with all this dodgy clobber from Greece and stuff, you know what I mean? They'd got like a big SpongeBob SquarePants uh, table with all these bits of SpongeBob SquarePants merchandise uh, from from different countries and stuff. None of none of it licensed or official. I don't know. No, it it was official, but it it just looked a bit um, weird, and it had it had weird foreign writing SpongeBob on it. SpongeBob SquarePants looking weird. Yeah, it's a strange a concept, talking isn't sponge. It? <laughs> but you know, you get like SpongeBob SquarePants shampoo and bits of soap and various toiletries and stuff. Well, that's what the year ahead's looking like for for Great Britain. Mm. That's why they've got survivors on the telly. And you could get us ready for that right. kind of post-apocalyptic pound store landscape. And you couldn't pay with your credit card at any of these. Only places. cash. Yeah, only cash. Really? So I loaded up with quite a few things, like on Christmas Eve, because my Christmas shopping wasn't going that well. It's exciting. Britain's going medieval. And about half the things didn't work. Yeah. really and and there's nothing you can do you know no you just have to grin and bear it and just think well that's what life's going to be like i'm a jackass yeah that's going to be the attitude you'll have to take for instance to the doctor yeah next time <laughs> oh he didn't do a very good job but there you go there you go you yeah, can't you complain pay him a fiver it's cheaper he sees you quickly it's not a problem is it no uh now listen let's have some more music we're, we're coming up to the top of the hour we could even have the top of the hour sting what do you think ben this is the voice of the big British castle. It is the top of the hour. Ooh, that's wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour. I'm glad it's gone. Now here's the new one. It's exciting and it's new. How do you do? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, listeners, it's Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe radio show on BBC Six Music. This is the part of the show that can be a little complicated for some listeners. Yeah, remind me again, because I got confused. I know, I know, it is troubling, isn't Last it? Time. Well, look, it's it's fairly straightforward. We're going to give you uh, an idea, a theme, a subject. You, but, but wait, wait, you wait, being wait, the wait, 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 wait. What? Idea, a theme, a subject. <laughs> an idea is like, you know when you feel that kind of tickling sensation in the, the back of your head? The hurting one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That little painful sensation. Yeah. Like, uh, like having a, like a brain fart. Uh -huh. Uh, that's ah. the, the thing that comes out. That, that was one there. Yeah, I had a little one there. Do it again. Uh -huh. There we are. Uh, that, now, do, 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 in your head is, just think of your head as a television. Right. And, you know, it's got programs <laughs> on it. <laughs> Images and sounds and yeah. programs in your head that no one can see. Yeah. Yeah, like those programs are ideas. Mm-hmm. And then you can write that or say it or express it in various ways. So Big Brother's Little Brother you're talking about? Yes, exactly. With the guy with the hair? Yeah, with a, li uh, a mic on the end of a long stick and a very posh man in tight trousers. Right, asking funny asking questions. Asking funny questions about Vern Troyer. So that's yeah. an idea? Yeah, that, well, not really. Ah. Uh, you see, now everyone's confused. Now we're in deep water. We're going to give you a subject. We'd like you to text in your responses to the subject. The text number is 64046, or you can email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. And Adam, you uh, are in charge of this week's <laughs> subject, aren't you? <laughs> I'm firmly pinning the responsibility on Adam at the top of the segment. That's OK. Yes, uh, Text the Nation this week is inspired by a Christmas present my wife was given, which was called The Wattle. Now, I've done some research into the wattle. Have you? Yeah. Spelt W-O-T-T-L-E. Mm. Shall I tell you what I think the wattle is? Yeah. It's a way to try and encourage stylish ladies to carry 
a refillable water bottle in their handbag mm -hmm. so that uh, it's an it's an environmental effort right. to stop people from buying so many uh, you know water bottles and then disposing of them which are a huge problem yeah in landfill and lovely mice get their heads stuck in them and yeah. stuff like that uh, and it must be stopped so in order to discourage this this company are, are manufacturing millions more <laughs> plastic water bottles <laughs> but uh their hope is that these will be the last one you'll ever buy oh no yeah. no no the last one so that's good and to make it uh more suitable for ladies who as we know have um sensitive gentle brains that yeah. like patterns lady brains that's right uh it's got some leaves a picture of leaves on it but they're not just normal leaves no no they're designer leaves designed by some lady whose skill in designing leaves <laughs> <laughs> transcends all other leaf design globally and they've stuck them on and then has it got some <laughs> sort of filter system yeah. in it no, no. <laughs> okay well you take it from there that's what am i right pretty yeah. much yeah i think i think maybe the company that is in charge i might be wrong about this is britta who actually do make water filters in other parts of their business right so when my wife saw that it was a, a, a britta wattle she was excited by the idea that maybe what she was receiving was a bottle that actually filtered the water that you put into it right and, and that there is such a bottle somebody's invented an amazing bottle that you can use in the third world that yeah. you can put like stagnant horrible water right. in and it will filter pure drinking water out of it Brita, i imagine probably do one somewhere in their range not that i know and i'm sure there are other filters available but uh this was not one of them right this was just a bottle with so when you when leaves. you looked at it you thought oh good this is something yeah. really practical That's right uh it, it's a sort of portable Brita filtration system yeah no no just a bottle it's a bottle with leaves on but not just a bottle because it's a wattle because it's called the wattle mm. so anyway it was very exciting and it made me think that maybe there are many other everyday objects that could be similarly rebranded to make yes. them exciting i was thinking for example of and this is you know this is all useful for 2009 for the hard times mm. that we're all going mm -hmm. through which incidentally should be over by around may the 10th the 90s can we call this year the 90s the 90s hmm <laughs> yeah. Is that confusing? <laughs> now that, that we're be. in the 90s. Oh, it would be a little confusing. But let's call it the 90s anyway. How about this? The step chair, right? This is a device that not only allows the user to relieve pressure from their feet and legs mm -hmm. to create a relaxing alternative to standing, but it also doubles as a compact device that facilitates the reaching of objects on high shelves without uh, cluttering up your room with step ladders for example so with the step chair you can not only sit but stand to reach high things on it stand on it on it on the step chair isn't there such a thing how do you mean do you remember in libraries you used to get those chairs that fold over and become a little no, flight of stairs too complicated really yeah this is exactly like a chair <laughs> right but called the step chair right do you see i like it how about this then store and sprinkle <laughs> uh this is a convenient compact receptacle which is ideal for keeping salt uh mm -hmm. not only clean but dry uh now after that when it's time to add seasoning to a meal that you would like to add salt to what you do is you turn the store and sprinkle upside down and through the little holes the perforations in the top of store and sprinkle the salt comes out onto your food wow so it's not only a container for the salt but a uh, but a uh, uh, a device for delivering the salt to your meal so but it's it, it's basically like a salt shaker it's exactly like a salt but you've shaker. just called it a, a what store and sprinkle a store and sprinkle so is this what you're asking people for new names for for new names well yes. I, wa I want them to think of a whole rebranding strategy there's more to the wattle than that isn't there yeah because you because it's got all leaves. this ethical clothing exactly so there's a whole lot of a cluster of ideas around very little substance you yeah, well a yeah. bottle <laughs> with some leaves another small. way of looking at it is that it's brilliant in its simplicity yeah i had a couple of ideas mm -hmm. well why just use a pencil mm -hmm. when you can buy at great expense a poncil <laughs> <laughs> a poncil is very different <laughs> from a pencil because it's got a design on it <laughs> and it's slightly bendy <laughs> a poncil and I'm going to get the top designers. Yeah. Stella McCartney, is she a designer? In a way. In a way. <laughs> Who are other designers? Uh, Geordie LaForge. 
<laughs> from Star Trek. He's a designer, isn't he? He's an engineer. Well, <laughs> and, and they, they're going to design Ponsels. Yeah. And Ponsels are going to be all the rage. <laughs> People will look down on you if you use a conventional pencil. Yeah. It will be. It's like the difference between an iPhone and a regular phone. Yes, I've yes. lost my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were after? Is that along the right lines? Yeah, the pencil. Yeah, uh, I have another. Because you've rebranded an everyday object and made yes. it very desirable. Okay, we'll come back with a couple more suggestions in in, in a second. I've got a few more that aren't as good as the pencil, <laughs> if that can be imagined. But text your ideas of ways to rebrand, basically reflog normal objects. Yeah in a clever, cheap way, to 64046. We'd love to hear from you. Here's Beck. Where it's at, that's Beck. You're listening to Six Music here on the uh, BBC network. This is Adam and Joe. I thought I'd change the way I say all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you said it with a little bit of disdain. Did I? Yeah. I didn't mean BBC. to say it. <laughs> <laughs> what have they ever done for the us? so-called BBC. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't mean that. You know, that was a mistake. If That's it came across like we that. love the BBC, we love the BBC. Very grateful. It's to the be backbone here. of Brightane. Absolutely. And uh, this is Adam and Joe. Now we are in the midst of text the nation. We're asking you folks to help us rebrand everyday objects to make them appear mo jazzier, in order to sell them to credulous folks. I had a couple of other ideas. Uh, this is spinning out of uh, a, a, a Christmas present that Adam's wife received called a wattle, mm -hmm. which is just basically a designer drinking bottle. A plastic bottle with some uh, <coughs> leaves on the side that enables you to carry around any liquid. But it comes with a sort of cluster, a sort of cloud of ideas around it. Uh -huh. it? Yeah. To make it seem like something more different and special. Right. And slightly insidiously, they're environmental ideas. Yeah even though one wonders to what degree it will actually be contributing to people not buying drinking water. Yes, because it's not like the reusable bags that you get at many large supermarkets right. now, which are not made from plastic. Well, that's what they said on the Wattle website. They said, this is the drinking bottle version of I am not a bag. Yeah, not true, because those are made of hessian and stuff like that a lot of the time, you know? It's, what's the Wattle made of? Plastic. Recyclable plastic, though? Wow. Probably. You can get it. I noticed that my roses were wrapped in uh, my chockies, my Christmas chockies, yeah. that we've already talked about at length. <laughs> they were wrapped in recyclable plastic. It's all going to a landfill. Yeah, no, you can pop it on the compost. It decomposes. Yeah. But inside the recyclable plastic, foil. Right. So rather counterproductive. Anyway, I had a couple of other ideas for rebranded objects, but I'm not sure they're as good as the Ponsil. Well, what would be? Exactly, the poncil is just the a pencil. pencil. <laughs> but I notice you're pronouncing it poncil now as well. Poncil? Well, how did I pronounce it before? Poncil. Poncil. Or like a pencil. Poncil. I, I just get poncier and poncier in the way I say I, I, it. Well, I think ponc poncil <laughs> is a nice That's part of the nice charm of, of the poncil. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure my other two ideas are any good. They're more like just good ideas for products. Okay. Uh, pockets. What are they? Well, you know your pockets. Yeah. Really, they're like underwear. The cloth inside your pockets of your jeans. Right. They sit next to your bits and bobs. That's true. Your hands go in and out of them. They, but they're more used and soiled than your knickknocks. You know, one of my pockets is bust right through. Exactly. So I've got a. I think got of just, the hygiene problem. I've got a direct line. And to this my... is a problem across the country. Yeah. Pockets are disgusting. <laughs> they're unhygienic, and it's about time pockets were invented. What? They are little disposable paper toweling sacks. That, that are the shape of your pockets. Right. And they slip into your pocket. Like a panty liner. Like a <laughs> panty liner. <laughs> and you wear a pocket all day, and your hand goes in and out of your pocket, sweaty and horrible change and stuff, but that's fine, because at the end of the day, you simply remove and dispose of your pocket. <laughs> Come on, that's good. And can you imagine the advert? Yes. The advert would make normal pockets seem so revolting. Right. There'd be all sorts of huge close-ups of the germs that live in pockets. Yes, you could have uh, a hand uh, retracting with some gum all over it. Well, where's the hand been? A man coming out of a urinal? Ugh. A close-up of the end of his fingers? Right. And then those fingers going into his pocket? Yeah. Touching coinage? Being very near to all his important areas? Sure. These would sell, I think, the pockets. Well, that is a good idea, but as you say, it, it's a it's a new thing. It's a new thing, so it doesn't count, does it? Well, it's stretching the uh, it's stretching the boundaries of text the nation, mm, but mm, I think that's mm, okay. Mm. If people have got amazingly good ideas, we should encourage that. I too. don't know. I think we should keep it on topic. 
rebrand i don't think that, I, I think key to this is you don't change the essential nature of the object exactly it has to exist if you're going to change it it has to be a completely superficial yeah. change yeah. pockets is nice though yeah. let's keep that you know in 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 the locker for dragons so down. i don't think loud spookers would work <laughs> well, either <laughs> would they loud spookers what's loud spookers they're wireless speakers in the shape of ghosts <laughs> <laughs> well that's a nice idea though. yeah yeah. Is that all you've got for loud spookers? Well, Just well, the name. Well, well, they're the shape of ghosts. Yes. And they're wireless, so you can hide them about the place. Right. And then they'll go, woo! They'll, go, they'll do that if you yeah. actually play a CD that's got that on it. <laughs> <laughs> with that sound on it, yeah. yeah. Well, it comes with one of them. But I don't think that's applicable either, is it, loud spookers? Well, loud spookers is okay because no you Pockets because you're no just good. you're just dressing them differently. Like you take regular speakers and you just put yeah, well, well that's what a the ghost is, shape isn't it? on. Yes, exactly. So I'm saying that's that, that's that, good. That does so count. right, loud spookers, yes. Poncil, yes. Pockets, no. <laughs> anyway, keep your ideas coming in six four zero four six. Here is La Rue with quicksand for you, listeners. That's the sort of song that if you stripped away the production, it would be f quite simplistic. In a wonderful, charming way. In a way. wonderful, charming way. Like a group of, the sort of song a group of enthusiastic Vikings could sing. Yes. Well, that was by 20-year-old Eleanor Jackson, Ellie, who calls herself LaRue. Uh, and that was actually released last year, way back last year, December the 15th. But she's top... A uh, 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 top t tip for greatness in 2009, Larue. She was on the BBC uh, news page. There's a lot of those lists around, yeah. aren't there? Like ban people to watch for 2009. Does anybody ever go back to the previous year and find out whether their tips were effective or truthful? Sometimes, but not very often, because no. generally they're not. Aren't well, they? generally, usually they're right because those are the people who they know are going to uh, marketing budgets going to be put behind right oh that's very cynical well it's true do Ooh. you not think it's very, yeah you know they're that they're the bands who are going to get the big push and sometimes they deserve the big push and sometimes they don't <laughs> but uh, that's the way it happens with a lot of things though nowadays mm. as well i mean comedy as well towards the end of last year you couldn't escape michael mcintyre that's true you know when a few months before no one had really heard of him or seen him i i remember him popping up on charlotte church's tv show a few years ago as a kind of uh, occasional pundit but um this like the last six months he got an amazing boost and he's obviously been honing his craft for many years i'm not saying that he's just like come from nowhere for no reason he's a very talented comedian but um he suddenly exploded though didn't he and that was partly because the, a button was pushed somewhere he, a button was pushed and he exploded yeah <laughs> wow i'm saying that he was... i missed all this i well, must say oh did you i saw him at the royal variety performance but he seemed <laughs> intact no, no no it was after that really he, it turns out he was packed with explosives <laughs> <laughs> and someone My God. pushed a button yeah just after the big fat quiz of the year what people will do for entertainment these days apparently jimmy Shocking. carr pushed the button really and he exploded right yeah but there's still bits of him left so um they're going to be on on various other chat shows it's good because now that he's in good he's in several pieces here so i can go yeah. on like different shows no, at that, the same time good. can do graham yeah. norton and he can also do charlotte church nice. and he can also go on like nine out of ten cats at the same time so it's good i did watch the royal variety performance though well done i recorded it in hd who is your favourite? Why do you have to watch the Royal Variety Forms I don't know, because I've got this new FreeSat box. It gets me free HD satellite Ooh. programming. So I was just recording everything in HD. Sure. And whatever it was, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Hand over fist, I was recording stuff. And I, 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 I watched that. And it had George Sampson on it. Do you know who George Sampson is? Is he married to Delilah? No, that's an older Sampson. Oh. The, he won Britain's Got Talent last year. Oh, yeah. He's a teenage boy with... Uh, Is he a tap dancer? Yeah, he sort of does break dancing to right. that remix of Singing in the Rain. He was a that. sensation this I summer. Did see that. He was the biggest news. He was getting mobbed in uh, shopping malls and stuff like that. Yeah. He did a spectacular dance routine that ended up with an amazing backflip into a puddle of water. Mm. Uh, it was very impressive, but very bad for his back. I think he might have some back problems. Right. <clears throat> anyway, um, he his prize was to perform at the Royal Variety but since uh since he he was famous during the summer 
his star has somewhat waned a bit. Oh, really? He released an album and some videos, and they didn't sell very well. I'm sorry. And the performance at the Royal Variety didn't go that well. Well, it was strange. I saw it, and he was flanked by dancers. Yeah. Like on both sides, who were doing exactly the same moves. Yeah, that he, he didn't was. stand out. They they they'd messed it up. Yeah. They'd ruined it for Samson. And then a couple of days later, he was quoted in the press. Uh, uh, being very disrespectful towards Simon Cowell, <sighs> slagging him off, Ooh. turning against him, Careful. saying that Cowell had bungled the issue of the single, that the single should have been released after the variety performance, <sighs> you know, uh, and so that's it for Samson. Oh, my Lord. That's my prediction. Yeah, you reckon? I think it's over. You don't... <laughs> Eject <laughs> Samson. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Cowell won't stand for that, will he? probably that's not. it he's made mistake number one don't cross the dark lord with a ludicrous haircut exactly that's rule number Samson's one in the pop over. biz listen we've got time for a tiny slice of billy joel before the news this is a free play hope you enjoy it's still rock and roll to me so good to me that was Ka uh, catherine the waitress there by uh titor Taitir. Taitir. Taitir and Taitir. Taitor. Oh, it's too tight. He's a sing singer songwriter from the Faroe Islands. I like that. It sounded a bit like a Michael Nyman song, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and some good glockenspiel action going on as well. Very nice. I've never heard of Taitor. Did we find out where those islands are? Yeah, halfway between Scotland and Iceland. Told you so. Ah, well, they're always on the shipping forecast, aren't they, the Faroes? Uh, this is, that was his, uh, from his third english language album the singer so what would be the uh language spoken on the faroe islands then Far foreign foreign, foreign. <laughs> um it's pretty cool to come from somewhere really uh sort of isolated these days in music don't mm. you think if there's the guy that records his songs in the he's kind of back backwards guy who was right. that guy i oh. remember talking about <laughs> the other week johnny, benny, benny backwards johnny backwards yeah. not bonnie vare someone like that well he he's yeah he, yeah, he goes out to, yeah that kind log of log cabin didn't he like if you that's perfect to be from the faroe islands yeah if the ideal thing would to be the only person who lived on a tiny tiny unnamed island right with a volcano in the middle yeah, and stuff and you made records you had a little recording and you had studio. a really eccentric accent that no one had heard yeah. and you uh, and it met <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the side of the volcano you did it maybe you don't have instruments you just have various endangered wildfowl mm -hmm. that you hit with a hammer like the mupper phone <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you've made a glockenspiel out of driftwood <laughs> yeah. or something and you'd you'd get a record deal in seconds easily. wouldn't you easily yeah. imagine all the copy on the back of your cds Don't tip on my motor scooter. <laughs> 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 maybe that would be good for song wars next week like the most <laughs> quirky foreign sounding like do you know what i'm getting at yeah yeah why don't we do that because we, we've got to do a song next <laughs> week <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> could one who are the artists that fall into that category <laughs> from we keep playing them on this blooming show don't we? every week there's some other new eccentric nordic fisherman who's released <laughs> some sort of a gurgling <laughs> anthem well, well perhaps listeners might be able to help uh suggest a few of who the, the precedents are yeah who are the who are we talking about <laughs> what are we talking about if you can tell us what we're talking about <laughs> and then we'd, please let us know we'd really appreciate it what's the address <laughs> i don't know it's adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk and that's the number six not the letter six and an ampersand not the word and uh, the six or, isn't a letter or what? or six four oh four six you can text us oh. if you know what we're talking about that would be great and we're in the midst of text the nation i guess we shall we come back to text the nation after after the next track maybe we should because i've got a few that i need to just sort through quickly do is that all right do a bit of sorting okay fine here's a uh, left field right now with release the pressure Sure. Yeah, listen, sorry about that one. Well, it's ended, that? it ended up all right, didn't it? Left field. I don't know. I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. I didn't think that was a particularly strong record. Did you not enjoy that one? No. Maybe. You, we were talking about cod reggae earlier. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> maybe someone out there did, though. Um, do let us know if you like that one, 64046. <laughs> but that, wouldn't that be good? If, if you liked it, tell us. If no one texts in, then, then we'll know maybe not to, not to pop that one on the playlist again. Yeah, I'm sure someone enjoyed that one. Let us know if, if yeah. it was you. It's Text the Nation time. Shall we have a jingle just to make things formal? Yeah. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. It doesn't matter. Text. 
And Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about rebranding everyday items yeah. to uh, make them more saleable, marketable. Someone uh, suggested this is inspired by something that my wife was given for Christmas. The wattle. A wattle, W-O-T-T-L-E. And uh, you would think that that word comes from the fusion of the words water and bottle. Wrong. Wrong. Someone has suggested that maybe it comes from the fusion of the words woman and bottle. <laughs> 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 well, who did? We should get that e e email up and credit credit them with their name because that's a good suggestion. For instance, uh, if you follow that logic and were to market a griddle mm -hmm. to women, what would that be? The whittle. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of uh, products could be specially rebranded for women by putting <laughs> replacing the first letter with a W. Yeah, like a hanky. Yeah. When we say women, we're, we're talking about sort of the, the marketeer's idea of what a woman right, is rather exactly. than actual, actual women. The fictional lady. The fictional, yeah, idea of a lady. The sort of lady who reads Grazia or other mags like that. Um, have we got any good suggestions from listeners for rebranded <clears throat> objects? Well, you can be the, the, the judge of what is, whether they're good or not. Okay. Here's one from Bennett. He says, a teeth brush. A simple change to the plural enables you to clean more than one tooth at a time, dramatically reducing the time required to achieve sparkling chompers. So he has actually changed the nature of the toothbrush by presumably making it longer mm. so that it can cover more teeth. Has he, though? Well, I think that's what he's getting at. Uh, it's good, though. I like, I like the changing you? of the name. Cause it... I don't think it's got enough. I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, Bennett, but I don't think it's, it, I think it's actually too good an idea. It doesn't have enough... It, it, well, it all hinges on whether he's actually it. extending the length of the brush, though. Yeah. A change to the... Pro well, maybe not. Maybe he's just changing the word. I think he's changing the word, and he's cleverly changing the way we think about the brush. Ah. That's Why what it's buy all a toothbrush when you can get a teeth brush? Exactly. Don't just... Because everyone else out there, all the that's idiots... That's true. That's brilliant. They're just brushing one tooth at so a time. So you needn't actually change the brush, you just change the packet. Exactly. Super. That's what it's Bennett, all about. Right. So that's good. That's getting manufactured. Very good. Well done, Bennett. Here's one from Lee Madgwick. Fed up with your house having no entrance and exits to and from all your rooms? Consider wall flaps. <laughs> a wall, but not just any wall. Push or pull your wall flap for easy access to your desired room. Wall flaps. <laughs> Lee from Kings Lynn. <laughs> wall flaps makes them sound a little trivial, though. I mean, we are talking about doors here, right? The problem with doors, generally, or wall flaps, as they may <laughs> now be known, is you, you only buy them once in your life, really, don't you? Right, unless you live with a very violent group of people that, yeah. or police. That so that them. would you'd have to have a two-pronged marketing attack. Mm -hmm. You'd have to encourage people to break their doors right. somehow and then sell them the wall flaps. I like the idea of hinging a, a, a door from, like a cat, like giant cat flaps. Right, hinge it from the Man ceiling. Man flaps. Man flaps That sounds nice. rude, doesn't it? Sounds it? a little bit. But that's the new word for doors yeah. I've come up with. And, uh, yeah, you just make them like giant cat flaps. Cool. And then certain friends could have collars with magnetic devices on them that release the man flap. Yeah. And let them into your house. Others would be banging their heads against the man flap. Uh-huh doing anything for you the, la the last sentence got me excited <laughs> banging against the man <laughs> banging their heads <laughs> Ugh, that's what's, yeah move on uh so does that get manufactured yeah. lee madgwick's wall flaps yes yes man flaps definitely right hey, well that was my idea not his. oh sorry madgwick and wall cornish wall flaps wall flaps is good yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah, here's yeah, one the from flaps yeah 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 Here's one from <laughs> Here's one from Jamie Sherry. Right. Hi there. My idea is for an ethical cold cupboard called a chili nook, mm -hmm. which prolongs the life of food by keeping it at a low temperature, therefore also prolonging the life of our beautiful planet. It's ethical and environmentally sound because the chili nook uses carbofluoride carbonites or CFCs to keep the food cold. This produces the essential carbon dioxide nodules that flowers require to manufacture <laughs> oxygen for us to breathe and live this is very good yeah these chili nooks come with in a what come in a variety of pimped up designs including a banksy version featuring a laughing mouse smacking a policeman in the face and a variety of bespoke tagged chili nooks with slogans such as girl lover mother's tail bone and heavy gun <laughs> <laughs> uh jamie in leicester that's very good jamie you've thought of every single angle there that's good isn't it? you know the only thing i would change is the name 
I would, I would go, I would go for Chilnook. Yeah. Because it sounds more ethnic. You know what I mean? Like, what about just calling it chill? Mm hmm. Because there's no kowtowing to punctuation or grammar or verbal correctness anymore, is there? Right. Branding. So just call it chill. Chill. It's not, <laughs> it's not a fridge. It's not a fridge. It's, it's not a chill. It's an it's attitude. Just, yeah. Chill. Hey, chill. It's in the chill. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the chill. Because <laughs> you get the bus out of the chill. <laughs> 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 i like that that was good Jamie, and, did and you get commissioned top marks definitely definitely and top marks for all the surrounding detail as well we'll send uh we'll send those to our partners in china and uh, start getting those manufactured mm. um here's another one from jenny penny uh she says hi adam hi joe i just had this amazing idea i'm not sure if i should tell people as it's so good it's you tack like blue tack but when you buy it the shop takes a scan of your face then a stampy robot pressures out a lump of blue tack in the shape of your face. There is also what? Yeah, it comes in different colours depending on your skin tone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. So what? You're taking home the sticky stuff, but yeah. for the for the time being, it's got your face. It's in got it. your face yeah. on it. That's it. I mean, to me, that you'd have to get those machines in all the outlets. Yeah. If demand, it's a big outlay. If demand wasn't high enough, you'd That's, be left with all these robots. You're talking thing. about, you know, you've just sort of invented there like Jenny a huge Penny. amount of technology, Jenny Penny, that is going to be vastly expensive to manufacture. And uh, I like the idea, though. It's a nice idea, and I wish it existed. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. But it's not going to be manufactured. We're not going to invest in it. I don't think so. Not for the time being. Listen, should we have some more of these after your free choice, Joe Cornish? Yeah. Uh, this is... Um, the Diggable Planets, they're a hip-hop band who came out uh, a slightly after De La Soul, I think. Right. When it was fashionable to rap about flowers. Yes, they were quite weedy, weren't they? They were very weedy, uh, but they had a one good track on their album. A couple of good tracks, actually. Their first album, uh, whose name I forget, I've written it down here. It's quite a complicated one. It's called Reaching a New Refutation of Time and Space. I it was remember. released in 93. Yeah. Uh, and this is a track called i've forgotten what it's called what's it called ben <laughs> examination of what you'll have to forgive there us listeners go. examination of what our brains are all examination mushy. of what yeah. it's all relative time is unreal we're just babies we're just babies man we're just babies is it the baby man is it the baby man yeah that was the diggable <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the diggable planets <laughs> you're like lisa i answer uh yeah Hey, you know, uh, while I remember, I'd just like to say thank you to the listener who sent us a fantastic Christmas card. Uh, it's from James, Ellie, and Stella. And uh, I don't know if he's made it specially for us. I, I don't think so, but we very much appreciate it. He's done a picture of himself and his partner and his little baby as a kind of tableau from um, the film Labyrinth. And uh, James has dressed himself up as David Bowie as the Pixie King. And he's holding a little baby, which I assume is his, the way that Bowie does in the, the film. The baby's in exactly the right uh, baby grow as well, the yeah. red and white stripy one. And then his partner is uh, acting anxious and uh, worried the way that Jennifer Connelly was doing in the film Labyrinth. And it's, it's, it's a genuinely chucklesome car. <laughs> so thanks for that. And thank you, of course, to everybody who sends us little bits and pieces, all of which we very much appreciate, and we can't mention everything on the show, obviously. Somebody did a, uh, a a video for Dr. Sexy as well, which I believe has gone up on our our, our website, the Six Music website. What, what what was that person's name, Ben? Do you remember? Gemma. Gemma. Is we'll good find enough. out for sure and say thank you to her, but that was very good. You know, there's no Video Wars competition happening or anything. There might be one later in the year. Yeah. But at the moment, there isn't one happening, so that was lovely that she would go to those lengths. Mm -hmm. um, we were asking you to suggest kind of weird, idiosyncratic um, bands from far-flung parts of the world that we might be able to do a Song Wars style in the style of... No, do a Song Wars song in the style of... Yeah. A lot of people were suggesting Sigur Ross as the... Um, kind of prime example of that kind of thing i suppose so and the grandmother of them all would be Björk, i suppose right um should we do that then i don't know is it a bit vague it's a bit vague isn't it's it it's a little bit vague if i was thinking got... an alternative would be maybe a song about the baz Luhrmann film australia 
Well, we were talking about this, listeners. We don't know what, what you think, whether you approve of this idea, but we, we need to do a Song Wars next week, so we thought maybe if we promise to each other that we will both independently go and see the film Australia, <laughs> which is quite an undertaking. It's three hours. Oh, you're joking. Yeah, and it's supposed to be a real assault course of confusion and right. comedy and pathos and tragedy and... He's a genius. Baz Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann is a genius. He's just terrific. He's got such a, such a sense of showmanship that's uh, disappeared from popular entertainment yes. at the moment. He's made four films and a Chanel commercial. Oh, my! the Chanel commercial was my favourite. It's my favourite Baz Luhrmann film. He's so It's romantic. Theatrical. He's so theatrical, isn't yes. he? You're right. He is. You know what he does? He, can, he combines m- music and songs oh. and films in a big p- puddle <laughs> and he gets nicole kidman in them and it's beautiful isn't it great it's so great, it's great. i love the chanel commercial it's so great it's a it's a revisionist interpretation of australian history what the chanel commercial <laughs> no the film of australia oh. it's saying that all the terrible stuff that happened to the aboriginal people yes it's all fine now is it? And they can all stop worrying about it? Is there ABBA music on it? Probably. Oh, I hope I so. No. I hope so. But we'd have to go and see this film, yeah. and then we'd have to think about it and write a song about it. I mean, that's like... It already takes two or three days to write one of these flipping songs. I thought you were going to say to see the film. Yeah, well, it takes two or three days to see the <laughs> film. Have we got n- enough days in, in the week to do all that? Yeah. Maybe well, what we about this? Write, what about, what about this? this? Yeah, oh, yeah. We write a song, but we don't see it. <laughs> Isn't that better? Write a song from the point of we view. Write a song about yeah, a speculative song about the film Australia, imagining what happens in it. Then maybe listeners who've seen it or who feel like going to see it can judge whether we capture any of the truth. Well, that's what we did with Quantum of Solace, wasn't it? Uh, it was purely speculative, yeah. but that's not that's not not a reason not to do it again. Uh, well, t- tell us what you think, listeners. Six four zero four six Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. If you've got any better ideas for song wars we have had some song wars ideas in by email we'll go through them maybe a little bit later in the show did you how greedy were you this christmas chocolate wise i was pretty greedy yeah yeah i dropped any kind of uh you know standing on ceremony with in terms of chocolate intake did you just wolfed them down wolfed loads of them yeah yeah what time because my stomach wasn't holding much right so i felt it was okay (laughs) (laughs) it was just a big yeah open sluice that you could pretty much pop anything down that isn't very nice i'm apologize listeners um but then christmas lunch uh seconds thirds no i i was still had tummy troughs yeah so i i picked some sausages and chicken right 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 you know i would have liked to have been more greedy at christmas lunch i had christmas lunch with my in-laws and they provided an amazing christmas lunch and i didn't feel like i could easily have gone back for for seconds and thirds but there just wasn't time for some reason i mistimed it all you should go for it you should become a big guy yeah like a I'm bright blessed. there I you've could... got the beard you yeah. should be a blessed guy i might just throw just... caution to the wind you're married you yeah. know you're not in the game anymore well you know i was very heartened you're not on the game anymore i was very heartened by seeing leonardo dicaprio pictures of him filling out nicely for revolutionary road or whatever it's and called. he looks good though all yeah. filled out yeah he's making a nice tubby mm-hmm. man there mm-hmm. so that's the way i'm gonna I mean, that's the way i've been going for a few years i might just go the whole yeah, hog. i think you should be a big viking man or maybe i will a big hearty bon viveur at the moment i look like late period jim morrison anyway do you yeah you think you do <laughs> <laughs> you look like early period brian blessed is what you really <laughs> do look like do but one one greedy moment that i did get slightly busted for was when uh in in the evening on christmas day we all sat around for a, another meal that was comparatively light meal right what you've invented a new meal or was no, this dinner no was this, this was, not this one was of dinner conventional meals? you know like on right. christmas day you have a massive yeah, yeah, lunch yeah. right yeah and then you have a lighter which dinner. is usually quite late yeah because you've got to wait for everything to digest a little mm. bit so mm. everyone just picks it a bit of maybe cold turkey or i don't know one Anyway, in this case, we're having a nice bit of cold ham. Everyone was over at the, uh, in the kitchen loading up their plates, right? And I, I got to the table first and there was some chutney on the table. And we've got, like, my mother-in-law makes this amazing chutney. It's the most delicious chutney you've ever tasted. And, uh, so before anyone had sat down at the table, I scooped out more or less half the jar with a big dessert spoon and I popped it on my plate there. And then I thought, that's grotesque. 
I've I've literally got half the jar, right, just at myself. So what I did was I covered it with some lettuce leaves. But you didn't put it back. No, no, I didn't put it back. There's no question. I wanted to eat the chutney. <laughs> I was looking you just forward didn't want to, to it. be seen to just be eating. Didn't want to get busted for being that greedy. Right. So, so I covered it with some lettuce leaves. And as I was finishing the coverage, I looked up and my mother-in-law was looking at me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. What did she say? Nothing. We didn't mention it. And I'm, I, but it's, I'm feeling pretty bad about it because I think she thinks that I'm a chutney weird thief. chutney fat monster man. She was probably flattered that you love her chutney. Well, that that's much. what my wife said when I confessed. She said she wouldn't mind. She'd be pleased. Was the chutney finished? Did other people go, oh, the chutney's finished. That didn't last long. No, I was dreading that a little bit, but no one really mentions it because we do get through a lot of the stuff at, at their house because yeah. it is so delish. But uh, I just wanted to share that with you. The chutney anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> the chutney what a marvellous story. Thanks very much. Uh, here is uh, a little bit of Fleet Foxes for you, listeners. This is Mykonos. Fleet Foxes with Mykonos. Uh, they were one of the big bands of last year and will continue to be one of the big bands. And their highlight of last year, do you know what it was? I read in some mag or other. Meeting you. Meeting Nigel Godrich. Oh, really? Yeah, they uh -huh. said that was the number one thing of their year. Quite well, right, too. Yes. Well, he would be good producing them. He would. Um, you know, they've already got a nice kind of echoey Godrich-y sound. You wouldn't want to mess with that sound, would you? Maybe not. Fox's sound, maybe. But he wouldn't mess with it, Nigel. He'd enhance it. He'd enhance it. He knows where to place those yeah. mics. So, listen, I was talking earlier, listeners, about uh, a, a, a listener. I've used the word listen and listeners, the words too much. Gemma Kemp, she was called, and she had made a video for Dr. Sexy, apropos of nothing. <laughs> I think she was slightly ashamed, for no good reason, of the video entry she made to Video Wars. All right. And she wanted to try and uh, do something a bit better. Well, she's, uh, she's succeeded and done a, a, a Dr. Sexy video with some very good lip syncing. But uh, we have rewarded her with an exciting new thing that we can do on this show. A couple of weeks ago, we were complaining about the text that comes up on a digital radio when you listen to the show. It has a bit of info, and we were complaining that they, they'd used some dismissive terminology to describe they us. They described it as music and idiotic chatter. Yeah, we weren't very happy with that, so we got it changed. But in doing so, we forged a relationship with the people in charge of the what we'll call the digital ticker tape, the readout that happens on your radio, and we now have control of it. Is that correct, Ben? Yes. So we've rewarded Gemma Kemp. Uh, by putting her name up on that digital scroll. It's one of the most amazing things that can happen to a human being. Can we just test it by just putting something random into it? What should we put into it? Uh, what, just some random phrase? Yeah, like, like, uh, Mr. touch my totties. Yeah, Mr. Henderson, you're hurting my totties. Mr. Henderson, you're hurting my totties. Could you put that in there, please? And could you spell hurting <laughs> H-O-R-T-I-N-G, like horting? Horting. Is that, what is that from? Is that from the film, um... That's an invented phrase, isn't it? Is it isn't it from that film with, uh, oh, ab about the werewolves? My totties. Oh, Mr. Henderson, you're hoarding my totties! My totties. <laughs> is it from a film from what? Silver Bullet is the name of the film. No, that's why, that Jane, where... you're oh, trembling. That's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so is that now up there? Mr. Henderson, you're hurting my totties. Hoarding my hurting. totties. Hoarding. Is it? So if you've got a digital radio... Let us know whether that works, whether that phrase comes out. And um, my whole spiel about rewarding Gemma is now <laughs> redundant because we've taken that message off and replaced it with Totti Horting. But it was up there for a little while, Gemma, so thank you very much indeed. Yeah. We might try and think of other things that... Uh, well, if you have any ideas, listeners, for things that we can I just put thought up it there. would be a good, a good prize, but of course if you... No prizes! Prize, don't even mention exactly. the word prize! For instance, we could reward the best text we get for Text the Nation with... Just By even saying reward there. is dangerous. Isn't it just? Because that's, that's competitive behaviour. We don't want to do that. any competitive behaviour. Can we check that with the big bosses at, at, at the BBC, see whether we can do that? Because it's not a physical prize, mm. is it? No. No, and we're not, you know, we're not asking for money or anything. That should be legal, shouldn't it? <sighs> I wouldn't like to say. I wouldn't even like to speculate. Let's have another record and then we'll come back with some more text the nations. Here is, uh, what have we got? Have we got a, 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 a bit of bunny man? Oh, blondie, blondie, blondie. Let's have some blondie. This is dreamy. That's blondie with, uh, dreaming. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Very nice to be with you listeners. Live on the 3rd of January 2009. The year 
of the baboon. <laughs> is that really so? No, I don't think so. Don't know what year it is, Chinese. For us, it's the year of the baboon. Yeah. Thank you for everybody who has texted in saying that the new message on the digital ticker tape has worked. Uh, people are complaining that Henderson should have a capital H. Our producer, Ben, in his defence, says that the only capital he can put in the phrase is at the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. The technology is such that it does not permit uppercase letters thereafter. So sorry about that. Um, ben, do you have that clip, uh, the Lapland clip, <clears throat> that I want to play, Joe? This was a news report that I heard on the mm. 23rd of December. Uh, things were a lot quieter in those days. You know, now, unfortunately, the news is filled with all kinds of hideous stuff. But then, on the 23rd of December, the big story was that dozens of children and families had had their trip to Lapland cancelled because of bad weather. These were children and, and children and families from the UK. The pilot flying the plane to Lapland, where they were going to meet Santa, uh, said that the conditions in northern Scandinavia did not meet safe operational standards, so they had to call the, the flight off. But the parents were up in arms. I mean, they were furious about it. Do you want to hear some of the mothers? Yes. Here we go. These mothers said their children were bitterly disappointed. Gutted, really. Absolutely gutted. Uh, the children were so looking forward to it, we don't know what to do. The experience is one that I wouldn't want to put anybody through. Your child's crying, grandparents were crying, parents were crying, and then we had to explain the fact <laughs> that we weren't going to Lapland. Oh, my God. They were all crying. It was just carnage. It was the worst thing that they'd ever... <laughs> what are they crying at? Because the flight's been cancelled. The flight's been cancelled. And their dreams of meeting Santa in Lapland have been smashed into a million tiny pieces just because the pilot felt that it was a little unsafe because of the weather. Hmm. Do you think he should have thrown caution to the wind and tried to get there? Definitely. It's all right that we were all killed because going to see Santa is such a goal for my kids that I'm happy they crashed. You know, why couldn't the... the Santa would almost certainly have gone up there in his sleigh and, and sorted Saved out the, the plane. Except that's what would have happened. Yeah, I think <clears> so. They would have been plummeting through the air. So instead, they cancelled the flight. Parents, you know, the children are mm. crying... Of course they're crying. Mm. So the parents then see the children crying. They start crying. Then the grandparents are confused and tired. They all start crying. <laughs> what if one of them was sick? Yeah. The other ones would inevitably be sick as well. Suddenly they They'd would all stop. start vomiting. Yeah, they would vomit. And crying. Yeah. As soon as... Well, one of them would one be them crying... One of them would slip over in it. One of the parents would be crying so hard they would vomit, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as, as soon as they vomited... That happens a lot, The children it? would vomit. As you say, then the grandparents start sliding around. <laughs> <laughs> one of them breaks a hip. Yeah. And then they're, they're crying then so... They're, then they're ripping at each other's clothes to try and steady themselves. Yeah. And their clothes are coming off. One of them crashes through a plate glass window. Yeah. and so there's uh, blood so there's blood everywhere so the, you know you've got all <laughs> kinds of serious injuries it it's was a, it's a domino the domino effect i mean i'm not trying to make light of the misfortunes of families who were genuinely looking forward to a wonderful trip that they paid for that was cancelled presumably they, they were got refunded, refunded. Yeah, yeah they were refunded but still <laughs> i mean they're right to be distraught because that sounds hideous though doesn't it all the crime Terrible. Uh, it's, it's a, a massive tragedy, so sorry about that, but I thought you should know. Thank you. 23rd of December that happened. Wow. Um, now listen, we're failing to catch up with Text the Nation, aren't we? But we'll do that after this next track, which is a free play that I've chosen for you listeners. I don't know if you heard, but we put a compilation of some moments from this show together for Radio 2. It went out on New Year's Day between 12 and, and 2. You can probably hear the whole thing on Listen Again. It's a best of, isn't it? Yeah. It'll be on the iPlayer, I think. Right, right. So it's the highlights from how many shows? Well, from like? about 14 months worth. Wow. It's some highlights. You know, I, I went through as many shows as I could and tried to fill it some bits a lot of stuff you couldn't include there for various reasons because it was just too complicated to stick in right but um i put a few bits in there for novices and there will be a few things in there that you wouldn't have heard even if you're a regular listener so uh give it a give it a listen i also chose a great deal of the music well all of the music that went in there and i was trying to envisage my mum listening to the show you mm. know 
and so i put music that i thought she would enjoy there for because we were filling in for jeremy vine i don't know if you listen to jeremy vine's show mm -hmm. but he plays uh very different kind of music that we play here at six music so i was trying to compromise in some way anyway this is one of the tracks that i wanted to put in but it was too long uh but it's one of my faves that would certainly not sound out of place on radio too but it's a smash by duran duran his save a prayer <laughs> It's old Frankie Turner, isn't it? Reasons to be not... No, reasons not to be an idiot. Yeah. By Turner. Thanks to everyone who's confirmed that the, uh, the, me the message is coming through. Is it still up there now? I just put a new one up. Oh, what have you put up? Stephen! <laughs> really? Uh, well done. Uh, yeah, that's us manipulating our text ticker scroll. Yeah. We're going to do a couple of text donations quickly before the news. Do we have time? Yeah, go on. Let's even play the jingle. <laughs> really? Yeah, come on. Oh. Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation this week is to rebrand existing objects in a way that'll make people buy them without changing the nature of the object itself, right? 22 seconds. Hi, Adam and Joe. I think an amazing invention would be the lady glass, an amazing panel of glass capable of reflecting beautiful stroke ugly images depending on the lady's sure to transfix their attention for many hours. He means a mirror. That's a nice you idea. You call it a lady glass. Ollie and Ellsfield. Very nice. 10 seconds. While shopping in London, I saw some fantastic adverts by Japanese clothing money. Oh, we're not going to have time. <coughs> Go on, that was a good one. The ads in the, in the heat of... You just stopped making sense there. It's 11.30, it's time for the news. On digital. Ooh, that's Kaniki with Punker. Uh, and uh, Li uh, Claire Grogan will be standing in for... Sitting in for Lauren after Liz after us. Yes, exactly. Uh, now let's tie up Text the Nation right now with the full jingle. Thank you, Ben. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. And oh. text the nation this week, sorry. Oh. No, I was going to say all the people that were using email out there and were worried about whether it was a problem or not, they wouldn't have known because the full jingle was not being played. What happened there? Did you, He played an official jingle, though, Ben, did he? He played an official jingle, but it's a, it's a shorter one, yeah. So it's your fault, essentially. Well, no, because the shorter jingle is there for later on in the show once the full jingle has been played. Oh, so Ben initiated the segment using a curtailed jingle. You were using the truncated jingle. <laughs> Such a thing cannot be tolerated, Ben. Not at the big pay. British castle. You will get your headphones and get out. Can I throw a pencil at him? Are you going to throw a pencil at him? As punishment? Ah, missed, missed him. He ducked George Bush style. <laughs> so listen, Text the Nation this week is all about rebranding everyday objects to make them more saleable. Mm. Inspired by Adam's wife being given not a water bottle for Christmas, but a wattle. Correct. A special design, a portable water bottle, which we are in no way advertising uh, by mentioning it over and over again, because it's silly. And here are some ideas that have come in. This is from Jim, Julie, and Little Louie. Even though there are three names on the text, it seems to have come from one voice, one of those people, who says, Hi, Adam and Joe. I've just had a shower and used a new towel that was so soft and nice, it was more like a wow. <laughs> <laughs> a towel that makes you go wow. That's a good idea. That's pretty good, isn't it? Mm. So you sell the extra softness, you have sexy people... Uh, with shot in positions where their elbows just conceal their nipples mm -hmm. and the left thigh is just far forward enough so you can't see any you know bermuda triangle mystery <laughs> areas <laughs> i was wondering how you're gonna deal with that uh, and they're wiping this towel against them mm, and it's yeah. so soft <laughs> and they're going wow wow in a way that's been dubbed like in that uh, toothpaste advert and you know as a tangential thing as a logo they could have an, an owl going <laughs> 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 why because it's, a, I don't know. Owls go twit twoo. Yeah, but the wowl could go woo. Right. Because oh, I, okay. It's got the word owl in it. I yeah, maybe they could be in. Now I understand. Right, right. A wowl. That's a good idea. Is that getting manufactured? Yeah. Yes. The wowl. Very good. Here's one from Andrew Book. Uh, his idea is puzzle nuts. A food and logic puzzle in one to keep the family enthralled and entertained over Christmas. Uh -huh. Puzzle nuts, unlike ordinary nuts, come in a hard shell that requires a devilish degree of lateral thinking to open and access the delicious meat within. Do you describe the substance of a nut as meat? Nut meat. Nut meat. <laughs> yeah, you could do. I like it. 
Is that a good idea? So they're like monkey nuts, which are quite frustrating anyway and give you something to occupy your hands with. Certainly. Well, there's always a cashew there in the bag that is, mm. is completely sealed and doesn't doesn't give you any purchase whatsoever that you have and to you really... you try and tap it along the seam and it yeah. won't split. And maybe you nibble on it and... But he's talking about making those shells plastic, I assume, and making them actual puzzles. No, he isn't. He's, isn't he? No, he's talking about collecting the hardest to crack nuts and marketing them as puzzles. I would think, because that's what it's no, all about. He's not being specific. You're going to have to clarify there, Andrew Book. Is he related to John Book from Witness? It's just what I was thinking. <laughs> the book man. Um, is that a good idea? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's expensive. It's not very ecologically sound and dangerous as well because, well, I'm still imagining it as little, um, Rubik style puzzle. He's I'm talking saying. about regular nuts from trees, from nut trees. Are you, Andrew? <laughs> We'll see. Okay. He, just send in a quick, in. Yep. send in a quick text to say yes or no. Uh, I, uh, yes, you are just talking about regular nuts from nut trees or no, you're talking about manufactured Rubik nuts. Here's another one, not dissimilar to the wow. This is from Will in Edinburgh. He says, morning, Adam and Joe, idea for all ladies who are tired of having cold legs on winter days. It's a new item of clothing, very like trousers, but designed to make the fashion statement that women desire. They're called wowsers. <laughs> similar, similar similar idea yeah. yeah women love a sense of wow the wow factor uh -huh. and this is that in the form of trousers wowsers mm. certainly that's a good idea you could even have w's on the back pockets yeah you like that one is that going ahead then yeah why not joe in london it's not me it's another joe in london has uh, been angered by some of these entries he says today's text the nation entries with the exception of wall flaps clearly violate the terms you set forth it's supposed to be about laughably tenuous rebranding not the invention of lame gimmicks these jokers should be verbally kicked in their man flaps forthwith or i shall take it to ofcom which lame gimmicks you see this is what i'm talking about then with the exception of the nuts which is all in your mind you're inventing a rubik nut you see, well, there's various issues there bundled together. I think earlier texts, uh, earlier texts that we read out were maybe just brand new inventions. I was guilty of them, my uh, pocket liners and all that sort of business. But I do think I've got the nuts right, surely. Well, we're still waiting for the text to come in there. Oh, no. A yes or a no. My texts well, have logged out. Well, let's conclude Text the Nation for the time being anyway, and we'll uh, inform you as to whether the uh, nut controversy is resolved before the end of the show and Liz Kershaw's arrival. But for now, here is some more music from Franz Ferdinand. Now, is this new Ferdinand or vintage Ferdinand? New Ferdinand. Wow. Have you heard this one before, Joe? This is no. Ulysses, released on January the 19th from uh, their album their third album which is called tonight franz ferdinand here's ulysses that's exciting oh is that some stylophone action i don't know no i don't think that was stylophone sounds a bit like it so that's franz ferdinand what was that called ulysses ulysses very exciting that's the new stuff. one from franz ferdinand uh, and this is uh, adam and joe here on bbc six music so before uh, the end of the show, which is now 15, less than 15 minutes away, listeners, we've got to resolve this Song Wars issues. We are going to do one for next week. We've floated various ideas, including a uh, song about the film Australia, the Baz Luhrmann film. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, what else have we, uh, we, we the, the other idea that came up was to, it was a bit vague, this idea, but it was to do a kind of weird outsider bit of pop uh sigur ross or bon iver style kind of a s sort of separatist pop i don't know what you'd call it like the most idiosyncratic pop song that we yeah think to be of, as weird know, as possible it would be a good six music song to play but it's a bit wishy-washy isn't it you have to be in a funny accent and stuff i don't know it would just end up like a bjork pastiche probably might be fun though we've had some other ideas and this is from uh, paul in southampton dear adam and joe as you've both been mega chums for quite some time Yes, we have been, and that's how we describe it as well, Mega Chums. I'm guessing that you two may have a skeleton or two in the closet, or at the very least a thumb bone, that the other is unaware of. Maybe Joe set fire to Adam's scrappy-doo puppet when he was a little Buxton. A burning secret that your conscience has been niggling at you for weeks, months, maybe years to reveal. Why not put this revelation into a song? Hmm. 
person, some sort of personal thing. That's uh, difficult because it doesn't give you much of a musical direction, though. Here's another one, David Cochrane. Hi, Adam and Joe. My idea for Song Wars is to take a speech from a film and sing it over a style of music completely inappropriate for that film. For example, Bill Pullman's speech from near the end of Independence Day set to an Afro-Cuban backing. There may be some copyright issues, but why let that stop you? That's a nice idea. Nice idea. Uh, here's a couple of ideas from Adam Butcher. He says, why not take the exact text of a well-known highbrow poem, make it cool-sounding for modern youth? Uh, right, right, right. Uh, what poem would you do? But here's the most interesting one, and this is kind of slightly off-topic. Hello, Adam and Joe. I hope you're enjoying your Happy Crinkles break. Please can I ask that you put the National Treasure songs back on the BBC website. My friend had lunch with Joanna Lumley on Saturday, so I asked her to ask Joanna what she thought of Joe's song. But Joanna hadn't heard of it, and I think may have been vaguely insulted by my <laughs> friend's description of it. I suggested that they listen to it so she could see for herself how lovely it was, but it had gone. And I'm sure that insulting Joanna, however vaguely, was no one's intention. Please put it back on so she can listen to it. Ta. We can put it on the website, can't we? Well, we need to get in touch with Joanna's people and make sure she gets a lovely CD. We'll do it through th uh, Jen, who sent us that email. Jen, we'll try and email you and get that sorted. And I wasn't in no way am I mocking Joanna's documentary that no, was, was shown almost in, in constant rotation over Christmas. It was disturbingly irony-free, as I recall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Another Song Wars suggestion. Uh, this isn't a suggestion. This is a provocative email from Derek Quinton. Mm -hmm. Hey, Adam and Joe, I feel slightly bad writing this, as I really do like your show, and far be it from me to criticise, but do you think the Song Wars might be a bit improved by keeping the songs shorter? That's not a bad uh, Otherwise, point. keep up the excellent work. Cheers, Derek. That's a good point, Derek. Because think? originally we did start at, like, 30 seconds, didn't we? We just thought no one would want to hear anything more than that, and that might, may still now be the case. Now we've become a bit self-absorbed. Yeah, now yeah. we're churning. I mean, I'm I'm the worst for that. You I, are the worst. Sometimes I go up to like two and a half minutes or something, or even three. It's not helping to decide what to do, though, is it? Well, what about a one-minute song about Australia? All right, let's do it. I'll go and see Australia. You know, there's no other. Re <coughs> Sorry, I'm just coughing up my guts. It's okay. I need to be forced to see it. Yeah, I'm exactly. not going to see it voluntarily. I want to go and see Australia. I mean, there's something in me that makes me want to go and see Australia. I think it's called a fart. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't about? know. I'm sorry. I don't. I, I apologize to everyone in the world. Uh, Here's gonna... my free play. Oh, yeah. Th this is an exciting payoff. Earlier in the show, I played Johnny Osborne's uh, song Truth and Rights, a classic old bit of uh, reggae from 1980. Now, a, a very clever remix man called Al Fingers has taken the music from Truth and Rights and mixed it with uh, Marvin Gaye's vocal from What's Going On to create this gorgeous mashup nugget. Uh, this is Al Fingers with What's Going On. Roadblock, Gribbit, Ram Jam. That's Al Fingers with, uh, what's it called, What's Going On, using the instrumental from Johnny Osborne's Truth and Rights. Very nice. Thanks. That's pretty much it for our show. Are you going to be watching Celebrity Big Brother tonight, Joe? No! Hey! Listen, we've got the nut news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember uh, a moment ago we were having an argument about what the fella meant by his puzzle nuts? Was he talking about just normal nuts or was he talking about modifying the nuts? Joe is correct. <gasps> I meant a nut surrounded by a brightly coloured Rubik's Cube type shell. Uh, he doesn't. That's what he doesn't say. Oh. What he does say is, I just meant ordinary in shell nuts. Yeah, of course I thought since didn't. most kids these days probably haven't seen one outside of a cake, for them it would effectively be a Rubik's nut. Also, my name is Andrew Cook. What Thanks, did you call chaps. Him? I don't know something that wasn't. I think it was a predictive text failure. Right. Thank you very much indeed for listening to our show, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate it. We'll be back with you at the same time next week. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up next. Don't forget, there's a podcast of this program that you can download. It should be available from Monday evening onwards. And what else? You can listen to the whole show again on Listen Again if you want, or the uh, iPlayer. Yeah, and thanks to everybody who's texted and emailed us. Please continue to do so during the week. We'll be back at the same time next week. Thanks for listening. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.